Welcome back to Decked Out. Today, we are joined by Airball MTG and Joe Cherries for an all Unfinity themed episode. As always, thank you to our sponsors, Cool Stuff Inc., EDH Rec., and Ultimate Guard, but more on them later in the video. That's enough from us. Let's meet the players. Hey everyone, I'm Airball, and today we are playing Solaflora Intergalactic Icon. It's mostly your standard mono white enchantments deck, protect the queen kind of strategy, but what a queen she is. Everything attached to her gets applied to all of your other creatures, so we're just going to keep her alive and put big, powerful enchantment auras and equipments on her and let her take the game on her own. I'm Veggie Wagon, and today we've got more roles than Wilds of Eldraine. I'm playing the Space Family Goblinson. Almost every single card in my deck either rolls a die or benefits from it. I've always been the luckiest player at the table, so why not use that directly to my advantage? And maybe we throw a Croc's other thumb in there. I'm MTG Nerd Girl, and today I'm playing Magar of the Magic Strings. My deck is full of some pretty iffy instants and sorceries. Things like uh, Hurl Through Hell and Thought Seize. Stuff is not very good in Commander, but it is really cool in Commander if you can cast them over and over again for free and trigger multiple copies of those spells and just get to do some really cool things while burning them out with Gutter Snipe. Hey everyone, I'm Joe Cherries of Joe Cherries MTG and I make Commander content on the internet. That's what I do. Today I'm playing It Came From Planet Glurg. And I wanna do two things with this deck. First, I wanna cheat Cheaty Face into play. I am in love with this card. And if I can sneak it into play under everyone's radar, oh, I'm gonna be so happy. And then I want to play It Came From Planet Glurg. And I wanna make it have 50 power, 50 toughness, 50 names, 50 arts, and 50 so ons. I'm trying to do something here. The theme of today's episode was voted on by our patrons. Without your support, this wouldn't be possible. And with your support, this could be extra possible. We're currently working on our goal to bring the show to weekly episodes, and we just need your help. So if you would like to make this show weekly and unlock some exclusive perks, head on over to our Patreon. But that's all for now. Let's get into the game. Welcome to the table. Let's roll some dice. Nine. Nine. Fifteen. Four. Oh, that that never happens. I don't lose. I don't lose the die roll. I don't lose the die roll. I was going to say, you lose the games for yeah. sure. <laughs> <laughs> Given how often you win the die roll, it's actually impressive how often you lose. Right? All right. I will draw for turn. Play a Rejuvenating Springs untapped and pass. All right. I will play a Plains and a Mother of Runes. I can tap it to give a creature I control protection from a color of my choice. Go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and just crack a Bloodstain Mire. I'll lose life. I'm going to grab a Mountain. I have a friend who thinks every time he plays a Mountain, he says Joe Montana. Every time. It has, it has No one's laughed once in the history of time, but he still says Joe Montana <laughs> every single time. <laughs> I lied. I'm going to get this beautiful Infinity Blood Crypt, and then I will pass the turn. Draw, Mountain, and I'm going to play Goblin Bookie. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> and it begins. Mm -hmm. This is a 1-1. One, one. I can pay one red and tap it to reflip any coin or re-roll any die. Excuse me? Yeah. Including if it happens to happen organically in our decks. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Any. Just yeah. any. If organically there's so many <laughs> there's so many dice rolling and coin flipping cards hey there might be this, this, is, this, a, this is an unfinity game this is true yes i'll pass the turn all right i will draw i will play forest and then i will cast selfie preservation which lets me search my deck for a basic land and if it has a tree in the art i can put it onto the battlefield tapped otherwise it goes to my hand all right i will get this forest no these are not conventional trees of any sort. These are definitely some sort of trees. Space trees. Yes, yeah, space trees, which are known for being distinctly different from regular trees. <laughs> and I will pass the turn. All right. <laughs> oh, that's going to be wild <laughs> later. <laughs> but for now, uh, we're going to play this roadside reliquary and pay two for an arcane signet. And I'm going to send this mother of runes over at Joe, Ooh, who has the, the most rare, mana. The rare mom beats. All She's right, coming I will for take you. It. <laughs> Just a stern scolding at you. A, uh, mother of Goons could be in that deck, so we might have a Mother of Runes, Mother of Goons type type game. I think she is the Mother of Goons. Like, she has a dinner. See, see it, to be fair, 
it, the art is drawn of the same character. So it is, she is both. <laughs> All right. Luxury Suite is going to come into play untapped because I have more than two opponents, two or more. And I'm just going to play an Arcane Signet. And that's it for me. I'll pass. I'm going to play an Exotic Orchard. I'm going to pay two for not a ramp. It's Brazen Dwarf. I uh, one three whenever I roll one or more dice, it deals a damage to each opponent. And speaking of dealing a damage to an opponent, Airball, there's one to you. That's fair. I'll take it. Yeah. I'm fast turn. I'm going to stay on the ramp train. Let's tap three. Play Kodama's Reach. I will get Island Island. We'll put one into the battlefield tap, the other to my hand. And then I will simply play that island for turn. Oh, hey. And I will pass. Okay. That's a lot of ramp. Yeah, that's why Mother of Runes had to get in. Because <laughs> you knew I had that Kodama's reach. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, I don't like it. But can't miss a land drop, especially with what's going on with Joe over there. So I'm going to play this Sajiri Shelter. <laughs> That's my land for turn tap. Mom. You don't need redundant protection. Uh, it's, there's no such thing as redundant protection when your deck is a glass can. <laughs> <laughs> and given that I have that protection, I guess it's safe enough to play this Starfield Mystic. Enchantment spells I cast cost one less. When an enchantment I control is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, Mystic gets a plus one, plus one counter. And I think that's where we've got to leave it. Hi. I'm going to play a Swamp. I'm going to tap two for a Felwar Stone, some more ramp, and then I will tap three for a Professional Face Breaker. It's a two, three with Menace. This is whenever one or more of my creatures deals combat damage to a player, I get to create a treasure. I can also sacrifice a treasure, exile the top card of my library and play that this turn. And that's gonna be it for me, I'm gonna pass. I'm, I'm, I'm very confused. What's you up? You all are playing like Good cards? Good normal cards. Where where are your weird things? I played selfie preservation. Did you miss that? That works. That that counts. My weird things are all the bad cards in my hand that I will play later that you guys have probably never seen played in Commander before. Also, I don't understand you all playing like a land every turn or more. I'm just going to pay two uh, for a sword of hours. Equip creature attacks, put a counter on it. And when it deals combat damage, I roll a d12 if the result is greater than the damage dealt or the result is a 12 then i double the number of counters on that creature okay sword of hours it's pretty nice by itself because it's going to boost one of my creatures and get me those essential die rolls but in particular it has a very good combo with something else that i've got in my hand yeah uh but i don't have a land for this turn i'm gonna send the goblin bookie over to joe why this is unbelievable. It's almost <laughs> like I have no blockers. Yeah, pass. All right, let's do this. We will play a forest for turn. All right, I will join you on the weird train here. I'll tap six mana for a Earl of Squirrel, which is a four four with Squirrel Link, meaning instead of Life Link, I get squirrels when it deals combat damage. <laughs> and it's great. It's Squirrel Link is so good. It's one of the funniest things they ever did. Creature tokens you control are squirrels in addition to their other creature types. So anything I have that is a token is a squirrel and my squirrels get plus one plus one. And then I will pass the turn and dare you to attack into my Earl of Squirrels. I'm super excited to get Earl of Squirrel out so early. It's going to control the game and get me a ton of squirrels so I can block, attack and do whatever I want. That's a fearsome beast. I don't think we're going after him. I am going to start by tapping two with the cost reduction from Starfield Mystic to play Gift of Immortality. It's an aura. Uh, when the enchanted creature dies, return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control, and then Gift of Immortality comes back attached to that creature at the beginning of the next end step. I'm going to target Starfield Mystic and see if that resolves. Yeah, nothing special over here. I don't have Force of Will on my, my, with my Earl of Squirrel. <laughs> All right, then I'm also going to pay two more for these Lightning Greaves. They give oh. haste and shroud, and they equip for zero. And I'm going to equip the Greaves to the Mother of Ruins. That's good protection. That's good. Yeah, you always want two layers of protection. One is never enough. <laughs> That's true in all facets of life. Mm -hmm. Except in... In what? <laughs> <laughs> in all facets. <laughs> I'm going to miss my land drop. I'll pass. Oh, no. 
So my commander costs five. I have a card in my hand that costs five, and I have one removal spell I don't want to play yet, and I'm stuck on four. What am I supposed to do here? You know, I'm a little concerned about Airball. So I am going to pay two life for Thought Seize. Ooh. Target player reveals his or her hand. I get to choose a card from it. That player discards it. I will reveal my hand to contain Blue Ribbon, Path to Exile, and Hyena Umbra. That is a nice hand. I think the blue ribbon, as fun as it would be to play in this game, I think is a little too strong considering your board state. Yeah, pour one out for the blue ribbon. Oh, sorry. And then I'm going to pay three and I'm going to cast my commander, Magar of the Magic Strings. It's a three three with a pretty sweet ability. I can pay three, note the name of an instant or sorcery card in my graveyard and put it onto the battlefield face down. The creature is a 3-3 that says whenever it deals combat damage to a player, I may copy the spell that is noted in the name. I may cast the copy of that spell without using mana for its mana cost. And if the creature would leave the battlefield, exile it instead. And you know, uh, Joe, I'm gonna take you up on your challenge to swing into you, your Earl of Squirrels. No, not with menace, I meant without menace. Well, you didn't specify that, so take two. Fine and I will get a treasure token with my professional face breaker. That's it for me, I'll pass to you, Veggie. All right, we're gonna get a land off the top and things are gonna be great. Path of Ancestry, Woo! we'll take it. <laughs> Cause I still get, I still have plenty of things I can do here. I'm gonna pay two to equip Brazen Dwarf with Sword of Hours. I'm gonna go to combat and really my only attack here is to you, nerd girl, which is the only reason that I would attack you in a game just because it is the optimal play. So here is a 1-3 coming at you, but when it attacks, I will put a counter on it. Uh, if it hits you, I will roll a die and put more counters on it. Probably. But it's, it's just a 2-3 now? Yeah, it's just, it is just a 2-4, uh, but when it deals damage, I will then put probably more counters on it. So, okay. Yeah. I will block with Magar and bounce. Yeah. All right. Time to roll. If this is more than the damage dealt or 12, I will double the number of counters on this. Hey, that'll work. Two counters. Oh, and everybody take a damage because I rolled a die. Yes. Mm. Boop. I'll pass the turn. <laughs> We're cooking now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. With my attacks, I can... Bang. I have open mana. That is... True, making me attack veggie for four. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not blocking. I'm not take four. I will activate the squirrel link. Boop. We got four squirrel tokens because he dealt four damage. All right, let's get back to the funky stuff. I'm going to cast I Spy, which is a one three flyer uh, for four mana, and it has flying. And whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card from that player's library. With it on the stack, though, I'm going to do something. I'm going to cast Double Major in an attempt to make a second I Spy. Yeah, I think, and yeah, I don't think I don't think that's anything. I don't think we're gonna stop that. What? Why not? It's so cool. Kind of wish we thought sees Joe. <laughs> no, that wasn't <laughs> like, even that cool. Dude, it's nice. It's this little eye guy. Yeah. It's Thieving Magpie. How good is Thieving Magpie? Is that a magic card? Airball cannot be serious. He doesn't know what Thieving Magpie is. Does he even play Magic the Gathering? It <gasps> is. Thieving Magpie is exactly this card, except it draws from your deck. How dare you? <laughs> you don't know Thieving Magpie? I, I'm just a baby. It's really cute. Just a baby. Okay, let's see if we can hit a land. Nope. You can sacrifice this land to see if you draw a land. That, I, I, the thought occurred to me, <laughs> and then I like smacked myself. <laughs> <laughs> See, I would totally do that. Need that like, land drop here. Two draw, two draws here. There's no way I miss. <laughs> All right. Well, we're gonna pay four, and we're going to cast the Archon of Sun's Grace. It is oh. a three-four flying lifelink Archon. Gives Pegasi I control lifelink, and importantly, has Constellation. When an enchantment ETBs under my control, create a two-two white Pegasus creature token with flying. And it's got protection. Oh no! It has it has the option for protection. Pega sigh. Keep that. <laughs> Cut that. <laughs> when you have to tell the editor to keep it, you know it's good. That's when you know it's a good joke. I'm gonna send the Starfield Mystic over at Joe. I 
All right, so I will go to blocks, and I will block with this spy eye because this one is a squirrel, and it will kill it. And I know you want it to die, so I'm just going to put this spy eye right in front of it so that they bounce off each other. Yeah, I kind of thought that one also got pumped. <laughs> okay, no well, effects. It's a normal spy eye. Go ahead. Well, I think I have a kind of a boring turn. I'm just going to go ahead and pay three and turn my thought sees into a 3-3 three, three creature. And it doesn't have haste or anything, so... I'm going to also miss my land drop and pass the turn. Normally, this deck is awfully slow because I just don't have a lot of ramp in these colors. But this time, I have all of my mana rocks and no spells to use with them. I'm going to have to find something soon. We don't need no lands. Nobody needs no lands. Except for but Joe over I here. actually missed my land drop my last turn. Hey, I, I have ramped thing. ahead, but I did miss my land drop. All right. I'm going to pay one for as luck would have it. Oh no. Here we go. This is a hex proof enchantment. Whenever you roll a die, put a number of luck counters on it equal to the result. And if there are 100 or more luck counters on it, I win the game. All right. Well, I guess we know where we are all attacking now. Uh, 100 is a big number. Yeah, honestly, I still feel more threatened by Joe. It's, it's, it's not that big of a number when you roll in D20s. Yeah, that's what I think. I don't have any D20s yet. I will go to combat and send this brazen dwarf at airball. Uh, when it attacks, it will get one more counter. All right. I mean, I will, I guess, first attempt to give it protect, give the Archon of Sun's Grace protection from red. Okay. And then I will go to blocks. Okay. And I'll gain three life. There we go. Because I don't really have good attacks on anybody else. And this at least removes your protection kind of for Joe's turn. So hopefully something can happen. Um... Get them, squirrels. Yeah. <laughs> then I'm also going to pay two for Icing Manipulator. <laughs> <laughs> I literally thought you were just casting Icy Manipulator because mm -hmm. of how you said it. I <laughs> now, this is Icing Manipulator. Each plus one plus one counter on a creature I control is also a food token and then i can pay four and tap it to roll two six-sided dice for each odd result i put a one one counter on a creature of my choice can it only be activated as a sorcery so i do have three i do have three food counters on this brazen dwarf i'll pass the turn which is a normal thing to say and rolling 2d6 is going to make your enchantment real big real quick this deck certainly struggles with consistency and inevitability except when it gets as luck will have it early in the game there's not anything that my opponents can do about a hexproof enchantment and eventually i will just win it's still only 2d like so an average of six once per round i'll draw a character all right i'm going to head to combat we will go earl squirrel at airball this two four squirrel eye spy at nerd girl and this one, three, normal eye spy at Veggie. No blocks here. I have no flyers. No blocks. All right, so two, one, four. We'll get four more squirrels. You're gonna draw some of our cards. I am going to draw cards from your deck. And because this is good old ungame, game, you get to see this is my actual hand. <laughs> That's, ooh, Veggie. You're gonna love this one. It's a land from Veggie's oh, deck, come on. which I will play. <laughs> 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 that means Joe didn't get a land for mine, uh, so I I get to hit my land drop. That's well, it could that. be, yeah. That's true. I did not get a land. I'm going to pay three mana for Cold Eye Selkie. It's a 1-1 one -one with Iron Walk, and whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you may draw that many cards. And sadly, no one is playing Islands in this game, making this card pretty bad. <laughs> That. Oh, that's really bad. <laughs> a one one, a one one that if it hits draws a card. Wow. No, you need two powerful for historic spreading seas. <laughs> <laughs> Busted card. All right, I will tap three more mana and play a Savala, Heart of the Wild, and I will pay one mana for Nerd Girl's card, which was a Wayfarer's Bauble, which was not a land, but is land like. I think that's my whole turn here, and I will pass away. Hmm. All right. I'll pay one, and I will attempt to attach this Hyena Umbra to the Archon of Sun's Grace. Hyena Umbra is an enchantment aura. Creature gets plus one, plus one, and first strike, and it gives totem armor. So if it would get destroyed, the aura gets destroyed instead. That is a third layer of protection. 
yeah, it's it's getting there's a lot of friction going on over here between all these different layers. I can't do anything about it. Nope. Still don't have force of will. First things first, uh, the enchantment entering the battlefield will uh, trigger Archon, and I will get a Pegasus. What sound does a Pegasus make? Ah! That's right. That was exactly right. <laughs> that, that was pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Pe pe Pegasi just sound like nervous horses. <laughs> I mean, they are endangered. <laughs> like, yeah, I think everything has got to stay home. Uh, I'll pass. All right. I don't know if I can do anything cool enough to make this good, but we're gonna we're gonna try. If you'd like, I will take three damage so you can thought seize one of our opponents. That's a that is a tempting offer. I might take you up on it. Granted, you could just hit me. Like I, I could block, but none of my blocks are good. Oh, that's true. You don't even have to. <laughs> I, you don't even have to make a deal with me because Veggie's just. <laughs> I have a one, one, and a one, three. <laughs> All right. Sorry. I, I don't have. Yeah, you do what you gotta do. <laughs> I'm just gonna attack you for three with thought seize. Great. So I'm gonna not block. That's fine. You no, can. I'm not blocking. <laughs> All right. So then I will get a treasure from the face breaker. I will decide to play the Thought Seize and put it onto the stack. I will uh, lose two life and cast Thought Seize. And I am going to look at Veggie. Who, whose hand would you like me to look at? Veggies. Do Veggies. <sighs> veggies. That's the funniest. I don't really have anything good. But. I, I feel like the enchantments is the scariest thing. So getting rid of an enchantment is the most impactful. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think that's probably a good way to go. At least like... For Not sure, slows slows airball down out for a while while we can focus on what to do here. I promise you're not going to hit an enchantment. No, oh. hmm. I promise you're also not going to. Oh, hit also he can draw. So he, yeah. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I offered to not thought seize you. All you had to do is take three that you gained back, but you said no. So let's see the hand. <laughs> <laughs> we tried to bring you onto our side, and you said no. Yeah. Okay. Well, I will reveal the path to exile you knew about and this defiler of faith. All right, let's get rid of the defiler. I know that that path's coming at me. I was hoping you would take that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> the reason I didn't cast it to kill the thought seize. <laughs> I know, I have this path to exile on my hand and there's a lot of good looking targets on the board, but I've got to be really patient. If I use it on Veggie's thing, he'll get more land and he's been really struggling. And I know Joe's commander is coming down soon and I don't know that anyone else can deal with it. So it's going to have to be me. I am going to pay two for some swift foot boots. Give the creature haste and hexproof. And I will go ahead and pay four, including one treasure, to also cast a tendrils of agony. Target player loses two life and I gain two life with storm. And I have cast two other spells, the thought seize and the swift foot boots. So I get to trigger this three times total. And Airball didn't want to be friends, so Airball's gonna gonna ease six damage. Wow! Damn. Uh, you'll gain six too, right? I sure will. And then I will pass the turn. <laughs> I'll, I'll even admit that that was that was harsh. I thought that was going to like, It's only Ooh. he. Look at the life linking Pegasus. Your life total is more than safe. I'm gonna go to combat. I'm going to swing Brazen Dwarf. At Nerd Girl, it will get one more counter, also one more food counter <laughs> token. Uh, so it is now a 5-7. And when it deals combat damage, I will roll a die. I thought we were friends. We are. Everybody's going to be like, man, Veggie hit Nerd Girl. She's so mean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I guess I have to take it. Easy as that. I'm going to roll a d12. This has to be uh, greater than a 5 it is a two. So no, nothing for me, but I will put two counters on as luck would have it. And I, I we're gonna, we're gonna put a very ambitious, we're just gonna start it with numbers. It's bad juju not putting a die on there to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And here's, here's what we're gonna try. I'm gonna pay two. Good luck, everybody. It's strategy schmategy. If there were ever a card that I embody more, it is this one. I'm going to roll a six-sided die. Uh, it has the indicated effect. One, do nothing. Two, destroy all artifacts. Three, destroy all lands. Oh. Four, strategy schmategy deals three damage to each creature and each player. Oh, please, not that one. 
five, each player discards their hand and draws seven cards. And six, repeat this process two more times. <laughs> this is everything that the commander player loves. Vandal Blast, Armageddon, Wheel of Fortune, Board Wipes, a card that takes forever to resolve, and may just end up doing nothing. Okay. Yikes. Okay, I'm gonna activate Mother of Ruins and target Archon of Sun's Grace and try to give it pro rank. Sure, we ready for me to roll this die? No. <laughs> but I can't stop it. So. Discarding my hand seems pretty nice right now. That's honestly what I'm hoping for. Cause then I get to do some sweet stuff. <laughs> it's like, we need the help here. They do not. So uh, I, I also on deck have one reroll. So we're gonna see what happens. It is a six. Uh, do oh, it two no! more times. All right, so we, so have, we have two of these. It is technically though unlikely possible for veggie to win right, right now it just <laughs> continue to though, roll sixes though incredibly unlikely it is a possibility we well, only have to roll every other six right yeah that's true <laughs> we have now two of these ready to go all right so here's one it is a one that is do nothing <laughs> i think i have to let that go because it, in case this hits something real bad I gotta have that extra one to go. So that makes sense. Here is the second one. It's a four. Uh, it deals three damage to each creature and each player. I hate that one. It does get rid of Mother of Runes and pretty much anything scary from Joe. Squirrel, squirrel, one of my flyers. Oh, uh, it's and Saval, no! right? Oof. Um, That's a big oof. But that and that takes out two of my things. I think it has to be that, and hey, we're gonna deal three damage to everything. I'm gonna get some triggers. So my Pegasus dies, Mother of Ruins will die. Starfield Mystic will also die, but because it has it was attached to Gift of Immortality, uh, that will come right back to the battlefield under my control. And the Gift of Immortality will come back attached to it at the beginning of the end step. All right, and uh, no land drop, my best turn. <laughs> at the beginning of the end step, the Gift of Immortality will come into play, and that will trigger Archon of Sun's Grace, and I'll get a Pegasus. Ugh, all right, I'm gonna go to combat. Some four at Veggie and two at Nerd Girl. I've got nothing. No blocks. All right. We'll get four new squirrels here to avenge their fallen comrades. And I will draw a card from Nerd Girl's deck. Come on, man. <laughs> <It's not laughs> You're doing fine. I know I am, but that doesn't make me not win. Look at us struggling out here. I'm going to cast Beast Whisperer. It is two green green for a two three. Whenever you cast a creature spell, draw a card. Hey, hey, hey. I think there's something under that beast. No! <laughs> <laughs> what happens if you get caught right away? If an opponent catches you right away, that player may exile cheese face. No, I got caught! Cheaty face! How'd you see that? Uh he had a good angle. Laser. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't think I have anything after that, but I'll just, let's just crack this Wayfarer's Bubble, goes to your graveyard. I will get this island into play tapped, and then I will pass to Airball. Okay. I'm going to play this Plains as land for turn, and pay five mana for at long last my commander, Solaflora Intergalactic Icon. She is a bit of a mouthful. Auras and equipments you control attached to Solaflora behave as though they're attached to all your other creatures too. Counters and stickers have the same effect. So anything that's on Solaflora is on everything else on my board. Yikes. Then I'm going to put the Greaves on the Archon. And I'm going to go to combat, and I'm going to send the Archon and the Pegasus at Joe. Makes a lot of sense. I will take four or five. I'll take six, six lifelink. I can do math. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'll gain six. And I'll pass the turn. I had a realization last turn when I drew this card from your deck. It's a really bad idea to draw from your deck because I don't have red. I don't have black. So drawing from your deck means I can only play your artifacts. These, I, as far as I know, I spy doesn't fix you. Mm -mm. You can hit her land. Yep, it just does not. Oh, it's true. So I can keep attacking <laughs> to get the lands to make the card playable that I already drew. Fortunately, there isn't a ton that I can do. So I'm just gonna play a land for turn. 
I will pay two with some commander tax to replay my commander. And I'm just going to equip my Swifty boots onto Magar. I'll take one from Confluence and I'll pass the turn. Unfortunately, I have no interaction right now, but if I can wait around long enough for someone to get rid of these pesky little squirrels, I've got a good trick up my sleeve. Okay. I feel like I'm not rolling enough dice. I'm going to pay two for Bucknard's ever full purse. I can pay one and tap it to roll a D4 and create that many treasures. Then the player to my right gains control of Bucknard's ever full purse. So let's make some treasures. All right, D4. It is a one. It is of course a one. Uh, everybody take a damage because I, I keep forgetting this trigger. <laughs> and uh, I remember that, every that time. worked out really bad. Stupid squirrel. sexy Starfield mystic. No, sexy squirrel. You do you, John. <laughs> For a squirrel. I mean, you know what? You could do worse. It's an Earl. It's you, true. You can yeah. take that one home to your parents and be okay with it. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, when you take when you take most squirrels home, your parents are not happy. Well, excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about from a logistical standpoint, squirrels are just a mess. Where's your mind? Because I'm thinking normal squirrels. That if I, if I brought a squirrel into the house, it'd be really messy. Can we kill Joe? I'm going to go to combat. Uh, Joe, this is for you. <laughs> I'm going to put a counter on it, and it's now a 6-8. I will throw four squirrels in front of it. Why four? Because they are pumped plus one, plus one. Oh, that's oh. not good. Shoot. Oh. If I had cards I could play, that mm. still happen, but I can't, I can't leave myself completely open for a whole rotation. I will just have to pass. All right. Untap. Dang, was that Fedgy choosing not to attack Nerf Girl? That's weird. He made a conscious decision not to do that. That was because that still leaves me open. That's fair. All right. Pretty much the only thing I have going for me right now is this chunky brazen dwarf, but I have nowhere to swing it. All right. I'm going to start my turn by casting an instant. You know, everyone's favorite time at sorcery speed. I'm going to cast Eureka Moment to draw two and then put a land onto the battlefield. I will drop this land onto the battlefield using Eureka Moment. Then it's fun time. It's time to bone a friend. <laughs> With this card, I can call someone and ask them to choose one. If they don't answer, an opponent chooses one. So A is gain control of target creature you don't control. B is choose target creature you control, create two token copies that are each copies of it. C, take an extra turn after this one, and D, draw seven cards. All pretty powerful actions, so let's make a call. Regis, I'd like to phone a friend. Sure, sure. You want to phone a friend? We can do that. Who, who do you want to call? Uh, I'm going to call my friend Christian. Christian, okay, yeah. Our friends at AT&T will go get Christian on the line. Hello. Hello, Christian. Hi, this is Christian. Hi, this is Regis Philbin from Decked Out. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah, it, it, it is. Uh, we have your friend Joe. They're doing very well on the show, and they need your help. So do you think you can give them a hand? I can certainly give it a shot. Okay. The next voice you're going to hear is going to be Joe's. They're going to read you four qu a question and four possible answers. You're going to have 30 seconds. Joe, are you ready? Oh, okay. oh, I'm ready. All right, here you go. All right, I don't actually have a question, but I do have four options for you. I need you to pick one. A. Gain control of target creature you don't control. B. Choose target creature you control. Create two token copies that are each copies of it. C. Take an extra turn after this one. Or D. Draw seven cards. Hey crap, these are some good options. Three seconds? <laughs> uh, I feel like taking an extra turn is always the best choice, is it not? It's up Literally, to you. I do like tokens. It's completely up to you. I have no say in this. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I five seconds. All right, let's take an extra turn. Let's no. do it. All right, thank you. Burp, burp. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that was uh, that was weird. I don't know what happened there. Uh, that was quite fun. <laughs> what did you get again? I got an extra turn, which is quite powerful. This is essentially time warp, but with a lot more in between. There was a, there's a lot more in between getting it. All right, I'm gonna head to combat. I'm going to send two at Veggie in the air. We'll send four at Nerd Girl. I'm going to leave back the rest. Final answer? That is my final <laughs> answer. 
I have no blocks. No blocks for me. All right, I will get four new squirrels up to eight, and I will draw this card off of Veggie's deck. Okay, good. You have to read it. It's not a land. <laughs> <laughs> he needs to know if there's a tree on it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I will then pass to myself. Untap. All right, I'm going to use all the mana. Oh boy. And it will be for one thing. My commander with X equals four. It's XX green blue for a zero zero. You may have it came from planet Glurg. Enter the battlefield as a copy of X different creatures on the battlefield. Oh God. Yeah. The madness with Sola Flora. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be something. I got to really think about what I want it to be. All right, my four choices for creatures will be Earl Squirrel, Beast Whisperer, this copy, which is an Eye of Spy, but also a squirrel, obviously, and Archon of Sun's Grace. So the name of my creature is, of course, Earl Squirrel, Beast Whisperer, Eye Spy, Archon of Sun's Grace. That's the whole thing. <laughs> the second. The, the, yeah. <laughs> the second, yes. Uh, so that's on the battlefield. That has happened. Now... I guess I just need to go to attack because I can't really See, do much else. I like Earl Squirrel Whisperer of Grace. You gotta, you gotta have true. bits you, and wait, bits on. and pieces of it. It has, it is, it combines their names. It doesn't say it has to be in order. <laughs> so we can have the Earl of Sun, <laughs> Beast, Beast Eye. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. The Earl of, and then the, the other rest is in parentheses at the end. I just um, call him Steve. <laughs> we, we can call <laughs> yeah. him Steve. That's also fair. And now I know it's not represented there, but it also because it says in the card, has all their arts too. So mm -hmm. very important if anything comes up involving the art. All right, head to combat. I think we're gonna throw around some damage now. So air ball, here comes eight, three, three squirrels. Uh, in the air, I will send three at veggie and I will send on the ground five at nerd girl. I will block one of the squirrels with the Starfield Mystic. I will say no blocks and take five. And I can't block flying. You take 21 damage. Oh my gosh. So I will take 21. I'll put me down to 13. I will have some squirrel link. I'll get five brand new squirrels. Starfield Mystic will do the blinky thing again. Gift of Immortality will come in on your end step. It's a very good phone a friend. It was, it was a very strong phone a friend. That's the power of phone a friend, right? Yeah, I mean, people talk about like it's the lesser lifeline, but it's actually pretty good. Glad I didn't call my mom. I don't think she would have. Uh, I don't <laughs> think she would have made as good of a choice. <laughs> All right, I will pass the turn. On your end step, the gift of immortality will come back into play on the Starfield Mystic. That will trigger the Archon of Sun's Grace, and I will get two Pegasi. And then I will go to untap. Normally, I don't really want to put my auras on my Starfield Mystic, but the fact that it keeps coming back into play and triggering my Archon every single time it does is making my opponent's combat steps really uncomfortable for them. I kind of like it. We're just going to go ahead and I'm going to cast Path to Exile targeting uh, Steve. That is not its name. I'm sorry, I'm going to need you to say the whole entire name so I know who you're targeting. Because Steve, that could be one of the squirrels. Uh, Steve the second? Oh, that's right. Okay. You, know, but... <laughs> you may put a basic land onto the battlefield. I will choose to get this island. Okay. And because I'm very good at sequencing my magic cards, after you do that, I am going to pay two and sacrifice the roadside reliquary. And I'll draw two cards because I control an artifact and because I control an enchantment. I'll play this uh, planes as land for turn. I'm just going to go to combat and I am going to swing at Joe for four, eight lifelink in the air. I will take eight. And I'll pass the turn. I'm going to pay two and I'm going to cast these lightning greaves. Ooh, the do is this a double boot straw? Yeah. It is a double boot straw. Pass the turn. I would really like this for t this to be a land. It is a land that comes in play tapped. Because uh, I don't have a mountain or a forest to reveal. I'm going to play Thunder, Thunder Wave. Wave. So I'm going to roll a d20. 1 through 9 deals 3 damage to each creature. 10 through 19, I choose a creature and it deals 3 damage to each creature except that one. And if I do hit a 20, it deals 6 to each creature my opponent's control. Come on, luck boy powers. Activate. <laughs> it's a two. Uh -huh. All right, so it'll still work. Um, so three damage to each creature. You all will take a damage, and I'll increase this by two. That'll destroy 13 squirrels dying. 
Wow. Fun. Even Emrakul can't do that. Beast Whisper. <laughs> and we each. You can deal with 13. It's when it's 15, he starts having some trouble. Uh, Starfield Mystic is going to do the thing again. Yeah, yeah. And you said we each take one damage? Yes. All right. Um, Steve the third is coming next turn, by the way. That's <laughs> that's a good, that is a good point. Um, yeah, I guess while I can. No. Joe, this is for you. No, I hate it. I'm going to put a counter on it. Uh, you're going to take six. And then I'm going to roll a d12. So this needs to be a seven or higher to six. Uh, I will add six to this, but otherwise my turn is done. Is uh, before Ooh. before the end of uh, your turn there, I'm gonna tap three mana. I have, a, I have a guess, I have a guess on the card. And I'm gonna cast Blood for the Blood God. That was my guess. Because <laughs> more than eight squirrels died, oh I get to cast this for only three mana. That actually is what the card says. It counts the number of squirrels that died. Yes. <laughs> The blood god requires <laughs> squirrels. It's a very specific potion. <laughs> I get to discard my hand, draw eight cards from blood from the blood god, and it's going to deal eight damage to each opponent as well. So I'll go ahead and discard my hand. We've got some doubling spells, and I will draw eight. Oh man, Veggie's board wipe right into the blood for the blood god has put me in a terrible position. I felt like I had this game, but now I feel like I can't win this game. And now the game is anyone's <laughs> game. Oh, uh, this is real bad. End step, gift comes back, Pegasus thing. Go ahead. I am in big trouble. Suddenly, Nerve Girl is a threat out of nowhere. Did everybody take another damage from the second die roll? One for the Thunder Wave, and then one more for uh, when it attacked. Uh, I don't think so. I, I did not. I have been left with very little options here only choice slam the commander for x equals three uh it came from planet glorg and this time it will still be an earl of squirrel it will still be an archon of sun's grace and it will be oh uh, an i spy it'll be all three of those i'm disappointed in you not choosing creatures to make it a six nine uh, is was there even options for that that's let us know question. in the comments. What, yeah, let us what know creatures comments. did Joe have to pick to make it a 6-9? <laughs> yeah, what, which ones did I have to pick to make it the nicest? I will go to combat. I'm going to send four at the veggie in order to get my revenge and to get four scores. Yeah. Here's me crossing my fingers, hoping you don't have a removal spell, and here's me passing. Man, you didn't think this lifelink was going to matter, but it really might. I definitely <laughs> knew it was going to matter. <laughs> I think you would be dead. I think that you have gained 11 life from lifelink. All right. Well, we're going to pay one, and I'm going to cast Shadow Spear. It's an equipment. Equip creature gets plus one, plus one. It has trample and lifelink. I can pay one and take away hexproof and indestructible from everything my opponents control. I'm going to equip the Shadow Spear to the Pegasus. I'm going to go to combat. <laughs> I'm going to swing the Pegasus and the Archon at Nerd Girl, and I'm going to swing the Starfield Mystic at Joe. I will go to blocks. I'll try to block the Starfield Mystic. I am going to sack two treasures, and I'm going to cast Terminate. I'm going to destroy target creature. It can't be regenerated. I'm going to destroy Archon Earl Eye. Oh, my Earl of Archon Eye? So you will not gain life, and you will not get your re-triggers. Okay. And I will take all of the damage. All right, so that's eight lifelink coming at you. And that's the turn. I was really counting on Joe to be able to blow up my Starfield Mystic there because I need a Pegasus to come into play on block to protect myself from Dirt Girl and Veggie. And now I can't. I might just die here. Veggie does have a clock on the board that I won't be able to interact with, but I'm not too worried because he's not set up and I can do some explosive burn damage. So first things first, I gotta take care of the other two players. At the end of your turn, I will use the sack I will take one more point of damage to make some treasures. A D4. Gotta make sure you can't make uh, any treasures. Only two. But hopefully that two can do something. Okay, so this isn't gonna save us, but I think it will help. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and tap four for a fiery confluence. I get to choose uh -oh. three modes and I can choose the same mode multiple times. I can deal one damage to each creature two damage to each opponent or destroy an artifact. I'm gonna go ahead and choose to destroy the artifact 
and deal four damage to each opponent. Sorry. <laughs> uh, and, and which artifact specifically? The lightning greaves. Okay. All right. Yes, I will die. <laughs> Burn to the face in commander? That's how I lose? I still don't have the force of will. To make sure I don't die, I have to kill something on Airball's board. So we're going to go ahead and take down the Pegasus because that is the larger amount of life. I think I just died of the Pegasus. The token? Yep. That's the only one I can like kill. So let's go ahead and remove it from the game. Can't play my commander. I can't do anything. Okay. I will pass the turn. All right. Don't worry. I've got the answer somewhere in my deck. I'm going to pay three for a Chaos Dragon. A 4-4 flying haste attacks each combat if able at the beginning of combat on my turn. Each player rolls a d20. If one or more opponents had the highest result, Chaos Dragon can't attack those players or Planeswalkers they control this combat. And just in case, I'm going to pay one for Ricochet. <laughs> this is uh, an enchantment. Whenever any spell targets a single player, each player rolls a six-sided die. That spell is redirected to the player or players with the lowest die roll. If two or more players tie for the lowest, they re-roll until there is no tie. Setting up this ricochet gives me a glimmer of hope because that is a whole lot more dice rolls for me and for everybody else. And it kind of nerfs Nerd Girl's deck since the majority of her spells target a player and she's not gonna have any control of where they go. Wow. So you could just continually tie and win the game like that. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, well, let's roll. Eight. 17. 10. Okay, I am the highest roll. I will deal a damage to each opponent and add 17 to this. And then we're gonna go to combat. Uh, the Chaos Dragon has to attack and it's gonna go to air ball. Okay, so it's how much? So uh, this will get a counter. It'll be a total of six, seven, eleven. Okay, and then one more because you're gonna roll a die, right? And this is the this is the die roll that happens after the damage. It is a two, so I do not get extra counters, but you will you took that one. And now, yes, you take your eleven. I'll get a forty-one on this, and we're gonna find out what happens. Pass the turn. Well, let's sequence this right. Let's see how much mana we're gonna have. I'm going to pay one and activate the purse. Roll a d4. Four. Oh. oh, four, okay. I'll take four treasure seal of play. And now I think we can do some stuff. I'm gonna play this Hall of Heliod's Generosity. And we're going to pay, pay six mana for Sun Titan. Sun Titan is a six, six for six with vigilance. So already just an outstanding body. And then when it ETBs or attacks, I can return target permanent card with mana value three or less from my graveyard to the battlefield. That is going to be these lightning greaves. I will attempt to equip the Sun Titan with Shadow Spear. I will attempt to equip the Sun Titan with lightning greaves. You might mess this up. I'm going to go to combat. I'll swing the Sun Titan at Veggie and I'll swing the Archon and the Starfield Mystic at. You did mess up. This is Vigilance. Damn. That one you got me. You got me. <laughs> I, I cheaty faced. <laughs> So speaking of cheaty face, I'm going to... No, I don't have it. Uh, Sun Titan will also trigger if that matters, but... Nope, it does not. I do not have a kill spell. I got nothing. Good game. Man, I thought I was going to make a little bit of a comeback there with Magar. And if I would have been able to untap, I could have reanimated a spell, equipped it with some swift boots, and made an impact. But unfortunately, we can't beat a hasty Sun Titan. Wow, that was super cool. I got to meet Regis Philbin and play Commander. Amazing. So in a pod full of uncards with a bunch of wacky stuff happening, the game ends in the most ordinary way possible. A Sun Titan coming into play and recurring lightning greaves and attacking for lethal, as it does. I had fun. I should have known when I lost the die roll so badly at the beginning of the game that my luck had run out. But I think that this game is nullified because it turns out all of the D6s were spin downs. We hope you enjoyed our Infinity episode. We'd like to take a minute to thank the sponsors that made it possible. Cool Stuff Inc. is the best place to pick up anything from sealed product to singles. Make sure to use our code TOPDECK at checkout for 5% off your order. Ultimate Guard is the industry leader in MTG accessories. We love their stuff and we know you will too. Make sure to use the link in the description so they know that we sent you. 
And if you need a little deck building inspiration, head on over to the number one deck builder site, EDH Rec, where they have all the synergies to match your budget and style. And if you would like to support us more directly and help make this a weekly show, head on over to our Patreon, where you can unlock exclusive perks like sign tokens from our guests and the cast, get into some spell table games with us, and even submit deck lists for us to play here on the show. And of course, if you liked the episode, click like. And if you really liked it, hit subscribe. That's all for today. We'll see you next time on Decked Decked Out. Out.